Citizens, citizens of Athens, citizens of Europe, citizens of the world, welcome, welcome, benvenuti, benvenuti, bienvenue, j'ai oublié mon français, Calo frate. This is going to be a polyphonic gathering, and you have come at the right place at the right time. The Pnix, the Pnika of Athens, on this glorious day of 23 September 2023. A day so glorious that the, the gods themselves have forgotten to pour a rain on us and storms. Maybe this is a lucky moment. Now, I'm Calypso. And with Niccolo, we will ask you to constitute the very first People's Assembly since the very last People's Assembly in this place 2,300 years ago. So we would like to invite you to close your eyes, close your eyes, and imagine yourselves perhaps a hundred generations ago. Or maybe even a hundred generations in the future looking back at all of us right here and thinking about what kind of topics we might have been talking about. Democracy is something you do together. Uh, it's something that's a collective activity, which means that we occupy spaces with our bodies uh, when we organize. So democracy requires spaces. Some of them are more symbolic, uh, like the space behind us, which speaks to a whole heritage of democratic creation, but also of violence and destruction. Uh, it leaves ruins behind it. Clearly, our current democratic system is stuck. I'm not saying it's broken, but it's stuck. Um, people vote less and less, especially among the younger generations, which I am proud of. So we really have to question ourselves why, and we really have to think of alternatives to involve people into politics and not just the young generations. Our current democratic institutions are malfunctioning how do we unlock them? How do we really improve the way that people can directly interact with them? Well, this is what we're trying to do. This is about bringing alternatives, not destroying our current systems in place, because democracies might not be perfect, but so far they are the best system that we know of. So how do we improve them? How do we make them more accessible and more tangible? Well, citizen assemblies is one of the tools that we can use, that if we should use, in my opinion, to make democracy more accessible for any kind of generation or underrepresented group in current institutions. So for that, we can use a tool like citizens' assemblies. We can use, of, of course, also European citizen initiatives, petitions, because hand in hand, our current institutions and deliberative, participative, direct democracy tools, such as citizen assemblies, can actually do magic. And because if they properly work hand in hand, if the institutions consider citizen assemblies, popular assemblies as allies, well, they can really truly be representative of our democracies, of our needs, and of how we want to create a joyful and fruitful future for ourselves. Uh, it is uh, lovely debated in academic circles and in the policy making field, the European Union, that mostly European democracy faces a bureaucratic problem. We talk about the syndrome of Brussels and we also talk about how we can ameliorate our democracy. Uh, I think that one of the uh, most interesting indeed ideas... In Democracy is about all of us, citizens, people, and all of us interacting in spaces where we may disagree even strongly, may reach some agreements, may never reach agreement, but at least we share a space. That's what democracy is all about, writing ourselves in the collective stories together. We have spaces like the parliament, like governments, like governments sitting together, like the commission for the EU, uh, that do their thing. And then we have the people having discussions, having uh, engaging into uh, with the media, or there's elections, suddenly everybody's kind of talking. But these different worlds are not connected enough. And yet, at the center, they take decisions that really have an impact on our everyday lives. The public spaces where we can gather are increasingly either privatized or policed. Uh, and we don't need to be afraid of putting our bodies in those spaces and claiming our democratic agency, claiming our democratic rights. 
uh, but we need to do it in a spirit of joy and gathering together, just as much as a spirit of fierceness and determination. And so in a way we are talking about a world where citizens are taking the initiative and we hope more and more, we see more and more. And the question becomes how does the state, how does the power that be, those who have the power of the purse, the power of regulation, the power of the law, how can they empower these processes rather than these processes waiting for the state to give it to them? There's so many different ways we can imagine to be connected uh, transnationally, but that is still to be invented. I would say it's the next frontier of democracy as European Alternatives has been exploring so brilliantly. Uh, we need to have a brave approach to the European elections and not be intimidated by those who say that these elections will inevitably lead to the victory of forces that are opposed to democracy or opposed to freedom. So we need to be brave about it, but we also need to set out a vision of what a desirable Europe could look like uh, over the next five years. It's going to be a crucial time for our democracy, but also for our climate, for our planet. There's elections not only in Europe in 24, but later in the year in the US as well. And so it's our responsibility to set the tone of the debate, uh, the planetary debate about the future of democracy.